While the price of a Big Mac hits an all-time high, so does the share price of McDonald's stock. Recently, a Big Mac meal was spotted in Connecticut, costing a whopping $18. And the share price for McDonald's stock recently hit an all-time high of nearly $300. This is great news for McDonald's shareholders and the company executives, of course, but not so great for the American consumer. If you assume McDonald's franchisees are raking in the cash as well, you'd be shocked to learn that many are going bankrupt. Just a few days ago, California mandated a $20 minimum wage for fast food workers, which you've already seen a 20 to 40% increase in some menus across other restaurants. These fast food workers just got their version of a Happy Meal with a 25% raise, but how will this impact the average American? I grew up in the 80s and 90s and remember when a McDonald's hamburger cost less than a dollar, even before the dollar menu even existed. A $20 Big Mac meal doesn't sound so crazy anymore. Well, I take that back. It does sound crazy, but it's becoming more normalized, which is unfortunate. Did you know that one in five sales at McDonald's includes a Happy Meal toy? McDonald's is the fourth biggest employer in the world with over 2.5 million employees. Every day, more than 70 million people eat at McDonald's, and every second, a hamburger is sold. Like it or not, but the Golden Arches are a big part of American life and those around the world. Since 2014, the prices at restaurants have nearly doubled the national rate of inflation. McDonald's grew more than three times the national rate of inflation. If we take a look at this, the quarter pounder with cheese meal, the meal itself, was $5.39 in 2014. And now in 2024, it's $11.99 on average. That's a 122% increase. The Big Mac burger alone was $3.99 in 2014 and now $5.99 just 10 years later. So what happened to the dollar menu? Let's take a step down memory lane and see how we got here. In 1989, Wendy's announces their super value menu. It was 99 cent items like fries, baked potato, junior bacon cheeseburger, the JBC, salads, frosties, In 1998, Burger King introduces their 99-cent meal called, or the menu called, Great Taste Menu. The names of these menus are pretty boring, but what's funny is it's actually going to save them from the same pain that McDonald's will face later on when they make their big naming mistake. While McDonald's didn't have their own official value menu, they were always known to have bundles of burgers, fries, and a milkshake for a better price, so they weren't new to this game. The most recognizable combo meal of all time is the Happy Meal. Introduced in 1979, the cost of the Happy Meal back then was $1.15, and that cost has more than tripled in 2020, costing $3.76. Have you ever wondered how they can afford to put a toy in each Happy Meal? For decades, McDonald's franchises or franchisees were getting monthly payments from McDonald's to help subsidize the cost of whatever toys that needed to be placed in the Happy Meal. The Happy Meal rent and service fee, as it was known, was approximately $300 per month, which kept franchisees from paying around $3,600 a year in annual toy costs. They decided to get rid of the subsidy because it was no longer fueling growth the way it once was. This is another added expense to the franchisee, which means the cost of the Happy Meal increases by 20 cents to compensate for losing that subsidy. McDonald's introduces the dollar menu in 2002 to rave reviews, The concept was to drive higher order value by enticing customers in with the dollar menu, items that are lower priced, with the expectation that they would buy higher priced items, but this ended up not working the way they wanted to. The stores started to lose money and some franchisees changed the dollar menu to $1.19 or $1.39 without the approval from corporate. In 2013, the dollar menu and more was introduced, which allowed McDonald's to raise the price on certain items in the original menu. This didn't last long and would be followed by another attempts to increase the volume of an order so customers would have to pay for multiple items at a higher price. Think of it like Costco, these bulk items that are way too much more than you need, but allow you to pay more and get more for the company in the long run. In 2017, the dollar menu became the one, the $2, and the $3 dollar menu. The price of food at home rose just 1.3% in the last year, versus food away from home jumped a whopping 5%. Many consumers are choosing to cook at home to save some money. McDonald's costlier menu has been met with a drop in business, especially from the low-income customers, which we would say is $45,000 and under, 
was a negative from an industry standpoint. That's McDonald's president and CEO, Chris Kempsinski, told analysts when he was interviewed. That part of the business we're also seeing traffic in the quarter was down. How is McDonald's stock at an all-time high if the low-income consumer isn't coming in as much? While the average consumer has been hit with rising prices as fast food restaurants, you would think the underlying business, McDonald's corporate, would be also impacted. The interesting thing about the McDonald's business is that it doesn't rely solely on the sales of food as its primary revenue source. In fact, the company has a hidden advantage. Harry J. Sonneborn was an early insider at McDonald's, and he has been quoted as saying, We are not technically in the food business. We're in the real estate business. That's right, Mickey D's is one of the largest real estate empires in the world. Approximately 64% of revenue generated from its franchisees is rental income. This is 38% of the company's overall revenue. How is this possible, you might ask? Well, as of the third quarter in 2023, there are 41,200 McDonald's locations across 100 different countries. And yet, the company itself only operates about 2,100 of those restaurants. The rest are owned and operated by many of the franchisees who must make rental payments each and every month on top of the additional franchise fees. Expenses to McDonald's for franchise operators is approximately 20% each month, which includes 4% royalty fees, 4% marketing fees, and a staggering 12% expense for rent. Those percentages are of the revenue that each McDonald's franchisee produces, which means the profitability of a franchisee is not as important as how many sales that it brings in. I know many people who would love to own a McDonald's franchise, but how are the franchisees feeling with all of this inflation? Worse than you think. The pie is only so big, says one McDonald's franchisee. One report shows 30% of franchisees are insolvent. McDonald's franchisees are leaving the system in mass exodus. 1,700 stores changed hands last year. This is high valuations and difficult operating environments that are leading to many franchisees to sell. As minimum wage laws have increased the cost to operate their businesses, they are also forced to increase the wages for not just those entry-level workers, but the managers and the other senior-level employees that want to be incentivized to continue doing quality work. You can imagine being a manager at McDonald's and having an employee come off the street and make more than you or very similar to you and how that might make you feel. So it's the same kind of concept. We have to be able to pay those other employees more than the minimum wage, which is getting a little bit ridiculous. Remember, McDonald's, the company, makes money off the revenue, not the profit of the franchise. So the franchisee only has so many options and ways to keep expenses low so they don't lose too much money each and every month. Labor costs account for approximately 38% of a franchisee's expenses, so I wonder when robots will take over those positions. Scott Roderick, a McDonald's franchisee, owns 18 locations and has been in business for over 30 years. He recently said this in an interview. In the world of McDonald's, human beings make hamburgers. Human beings smile at customers in the drive-thru. Human beings build Happy Meals. And while we have relied far more today on technology than ever before, it's not supplanted the importance of human beings in the workplace. Well, not so quick, Scott. Have you seen that fully automated McDonald's in Fort Worth, Texas? A new test restaurant is using an automatic conveyor belt to bring you your order. I wonder if the conveyor belt can smile, Scott. Customers order through an app or a kiosk without any human involvement. The test of the automated location comes as companies struggle to hire a bit shrinking labor pool that's pushing wages higher and giving workers more bargaining power. At the same time, automation is gaining a foothold in more industries, with experts predicting that 10 million jobs may be at risk over the next few years. Low-wage positions in fast food and service industries, most of all. Without a doubt, fast food inflation has created a lot to talk about in 2024. Let me know in the comments what you think of all of this mess. As I like to end each video, I hope something good happens to you today. And thanks for coming and watching the video. We'll see you next time.